Psalms 23, verse 1 says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is an indication to us that we need a shepherd. Some of us, we are shepherds of our own lives. Forgetting that we are limited as human beings. We don't even have full understanding of the present of our lives. Not to talk of the past and the future. So how now can you be a shepherd when you don't have knowledge of, complete knowledge of what is expected of you? A shepherd is somebody who leads. A, somebody, a shepherd is somebody who gives direction. Is somebody who, who guides. Is somebody who, I mean, is, who stands ahead because the shepherd knows the way. The Bible says in, in, in the book of John, Jesus makes us to understand that he is a good shepherd and the good shepherd lays down his life for the flock. If we make the Lord our shepherd, then we have the assurance that we shall not want. Some other Bible versions say, I have everything I need. The thing is that in today's world, in today's day-to-day -to -day life, most of us have stopped looking up to Jesus as a shepherd. And we have started looking up to man as a shepherd. We have started looking up to women as a shepherd. That is why you see in our churches today, there's a lot of criticism, there's a lot of confusion, there's a lot of backbiting, slander, argument, envy, jealousy, murder. Because we have stopped looking at, at Jesus as our shepherd. And we have focused our, our eyes on the pastor, on mommy pastor, sister pastor, brother pastor. Forgetting that it is when the Lord is our shepherd that we will have everything that we need. In that everything that we need, there is peace. Peace even in the midst of criticism. Peace, peace even in the midst of rejection. Even in the midst of trials. Even in the midst of gossip. When the Lord is our shepherd... We have everything, peace inclusive, that we need. Sometimes we don't even know what we need. It's like a sheep. A sheep, there are some kinds of grass that if the sheep eats, it is dangerous for the sheep's health. It is the shepherd to say, don't eat this one, eat this other one. But if the sheep wants to show the shepherd that I know too much, the sheep will eat the dangerous or poisonous grass and eventually land into trouble. So, we need to be led by our shepherd, Jesus. God has put earthly shepherds as in the form of spiritual leaders, pastors, and what have you. But that does not mean that we have to remove our eyes from Jesus, who is the overall shepherd. Because even these our human shepherds, they have their weaknesses. They have their shortcomings. Even we as shepherds in our homes... As mothers, as, as sisters, as wives, we have our weaknesses. Sometimes they call you, you are in a bad mood, your answer is not the same. Sometimes they call you, you are overjoyed, you, 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 your answer is not the same. Sometimes you make promises that you are unable to keep because you, you got the call when you were so happy. Sometimes you answer rudely, sometimes you, you, you hit back because you are angry. And as a human being, from time to time, we are, we are bound to fall into such shortcomings. But if we allow the Lord to be our shepherd, to be our guide, he's the one who will protect us. A shepherd protects the sheep from wolves, from other uh, predators. Let us allow ourselves to be shepherded, to be led, to be guided by Jesus through the Holy Spirit in us. Let us not come with high grammar, with high explanation, high English. To come and teach the shepherd things that we ourselves don't even know that he has full knowledge of. Some of us will come into the presence of God when the Holy Spirit is convicting us of something or when the Bible is telling us about something because the Bible is the mirror. When you read the Bible, it is the book that transforms you. And then you, you know that this thing is talking about you in this particular department. You start explaining. You start justifying. You start blaming others. God, I did this because of this person. God, I did not do this because of this person. That is not what it is all about. If we are going to be shepherded by Jesus, we should be the kind of people who come to say, Yes, Lord, I made a mistake. Have mercy upon me. Don't reject me from your fold, from your flock. Continue to count me as one of yours. Who is our shepherd today? Who is our shepherd today? Verse 2 says, He makes me 
lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. The Bible did not say, I make myself to lie down in green pastures. It is He, He, He who makes us to lie down in green pastures. Who is this He in our lives? The Bible is talking about Jesus, but some of us have replaced this He with our husbands, with our pastors, with our titles, with our accolades, with our certificates. This he, what is the representation of this he in our lives? Some of us have used connection to think that it is our connection that will make us to lie in green pastures. The green pastures that the Bible is talking about here is a place of worship. It's a place of rest. It's a place of provision. It's a place of protection. It's a place of abundance. Not human abundance. Not abundance according to human definition. But abundance according to divine definition. And that is why you can see somebody who, according to the world standards, has nothing. But according to heavenly standards, has everything. everything. The person is always joyful. The person is always radiant. Psalm 34 verse 5 says, Them that look up to the Lord, their faces are radiant. And they shall lack nothing good. These good things that the Lord is providing for us is not the good things that the world is providing for us. At all. The things that the world has considered good things are things that are taking us slowly but surely to the grave. Are things that are making us to enter hell at high speed. Mm-hmm. But if we make the Lord our shepherd, he alone will make us to lie in green pastures. There are pastures and there are pastures. Mm-hmm. These green pastures that the Lord is talking about here is the one that he himself has prepared for us. Hallelujah. The Bible says he leads me beside still waters. Water itself, the devil has turned water to something else where all kinds of marine agent leaves or leaf. All kinds of mommy water, papa water, picking water, all the kinds that you can think of. They live in the water. But the Bible makes us to understand in Psalms 24, there's one that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Meaning, even this water that the enemy is parading about as his, his, his domicile, his home, his house, he did not create it. He is a tenant. The Lord is the one to lead us Beside still waters. The devil will lead us to troubled waters. The devil will lead us to high seas and leave us in the middle of the high seas without a way out. But if the Lord leads, leads us to still waters, then we have the assurance, we have the guarantee, we have the confidence that the person who led us here is the good shepherd and who is ready to lay down his life for us. And so we are guaranteed of rest, of security, Amen. of provision, of protection, of peace, Amen. and everything that comes with it. Amen. Verse 3 says, He restores my soul. Mm. He leads me in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Mm. When the Bible talks of restores, it means sometimes we faint. You only restore something that is down, something that is bad, something that is destroyed, something that is weak, something that is tired. As human beings, if we shepherd ourselves, we will miss it. If we shepherd ourselves, we will fail. Because man on its own or man on his own is bound to fail. Man is limited. The Bible says on your own you can do nothing. But you can do all things. Not some things, not most things, not few things. not But all things through Christ who strengthens me. If the Lord is restoring our soul, it means that on the days when we grow faint, on the days when we grow weary, on the days when the sisters in the church, the brothers in the church, the mommy pastor, papa pastor, picking pastor, are getting on our last nerve, we will remember to go back to our divine shepherd and he will restore our soul. He will give us grace to press on in this Christian race. He will give us the, 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 the confidence, the assurance that we need. It's like in our day-to-day lives, when you are feeling weak, especially as a woman, you start looking for iron tablets, you start looking for vitamin C, G, E, B, P, Q, all those vitamins, so that your body can be back on uh, back in shape. Let us revitamine our, spi- or vitamize our spiritual lives. Let us go back to the person who restores our souls, who gives us energy drink at no cost. 
he leads us in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. See, our righteousness is like a filthy rag before God. That is why no matter how good a man is, you cannot please God unless you accept that your righteousness is of Jesus. He makes us righteous. He leads us in paths of righteousness. If he is the one leading us, then he will say, okay, this is the right way to go. It's like a policeman controlling traffic. You cannot tell the policeman what to do. Even if you have the latest kind of driver's license, you cannot instruct a traffic control police on what to do and what not to do because he knows his job. And so this is our shepherd in the person of Jesus is leading us. My daughter, don't go this way. My daughter, don't think like this. My daughter, don't talk like this. My daughter, do this one. My daughter, don't do this one. My daughter, ignore this person because this is a, a, a trap. My daughter, forgive this person because you will entrap yourself in unforgiveness. My daughter, avoid this kind of conversation because you will quarrel. You will tell a lie. You will do this. You will do that. My daughter, avoid this person because you will do like this. And that is the work of the Holy Spirit. He leads us in paths of righteousness. So that the name of the Lord will be glorified. He does not lead us in paths of righteousness because of merit, because of qualification, because of beauty, because of intellect. But it is for his name's sake. So that when we begin to go out to preach that Jesus is Lord, the kind of lives that we have led will make people to say, yes, I want to know this Jesus that this sister is talking about. The other day I went to preach to a woman and the woman told me she's not going to church because the people in church say one thing and they do another thing. Oh, I felt it in my heart. But is she lying? Not at all. She's telling the truth. She's telling the truth. If God is the one leading us in paths of righteousness, it is so that his name will be glorified in our lives. Praise the Lord. I'm on the phone. Now I'm coming. Verse 4 says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. When we go through the trials, the difficulties. This in the Bible says, the valley of the shadow. The Bible does not say, even though I go through the valley of death. It's only a shadow. And a shadow is just a reflection of what is. It is not actually what is. So when we go through situations in life that make us feel that God has turned his back on us, that make us feel as if, you know, we, we, we have hit rock bottom. Let us remember that the Bible says a shadow of death and not death in itself. This is an assurance that we will not be consumed. We will not be destroyed. We will not be drowned. The Bible says even though we go through the waters, we shall not be consumed. Remember that Jesus was in the boat. When the tides were rise, rise, rising and the disciples were thinking that they would die, they woke him up and said, Master, do you not care that we perish? We should have the assurance that when we are going through what we are going through, the marital stress, ministerial stress, financial stress, eh, academic stress, and all the kinds of things that can stress us in life, we should remember that Jesus is in the boat. He is asleep, but he is still in the boat. We should remember that even when we are going through the, it is the shadow of the, or the valley of the shadow of death. We shall fear no evil. What is it that your ancestors have decreed? What is it that witches and wizards have decreed? What is it that human beings have decreed? That is making us to have sleepless nights. That is making us to be running helter skelter from one prophet to another prophet to another evangelist to another pastor. When, when one Bible verse we don't know. We are waiting to hear what God has said to us in, through the mouth of other people. Whereas our own Bibles, we don't know any verse. Let us be the kind of people who have the assurance that even when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. Because for you are with me. Who is with us? Are we the kind of people who for the least headache we have, we call mama pastor, brother pastor, sister pastor. Or are we the kind of people who have the assurance, first of all, that even as we are calling brother pastor, we have already called master Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your rod and your staff, 
they comfort me. A rod, it comes for correction. When God yes. corrects us, the Bible says, spare the rod and spoil the child. Mm-hmm. He who spares the rod, who pretends, who turns a blind eye on the mistakes that the children are making, will use those same blind eyes to cry tomorrow. Yes. When God corrects us, do we run away from church? Because God will not come down in person to correct us. God will use human beings to correct us in love. When we are chastised for something that we did or did not do out of ignorance, do we leave the church? Do we forsake the gathering of the brethren? Do we begin to slander, speak English, look for, 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 for a, 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 how do they call, choristers to sing the same song that we are singing? Or do we accept and confess that we have made a mistake? When the Lord corrects us through his word. When David was, uh, was being corrected by Nathan. We did not see David giving explanations and excuses. David confessed his sins. Today before they finish correcting us. We have already. In fact. Hmm, may God help us. The Bible says your road. The road of correction. May we not depart from God's presence. When his road of correction comes. Because he, it is he who God loves. That he corrects. Yes. Your rod and your staff. A staff is a guide. A staff yes. is direction. Look at what Moses did with his staff yes. in, in Egypt. Look at what Aaron's staff was able to do. The staff yes. of the Lord is the insurance that we have. That as long as he is yes. with us, we will not miss it. This rod and staff, they comfort us. Yes. Sometimes when God corrects us, corrects us, it is painful. But at the end of the day, we come back and say, Father, thank you. Because if you did not correct me from this, I wouldn't have learned these lessons that I have learned. They comfort us. They mold us. They make us better people. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, what, what, what grief on the sight of our enemies. That these people whom they have been expecting or this person whom they have been expecting to die, to disappear, eh, to be erased from the surface of the earth as a result of one problem or another. Yet this person is receiving honor. This is the same kind of feeling that Haman had when he saw Mordecai being honored. Yes. Haman almost choked. Haman, in fact, I'm sure if conversion was existed at that time, Haman could have had high fever with conversion. To imagine that his arch enemy, God used by his hands to prepare the table for him, thinking yeah. that he was doing it for himself. That is what God does. When people have, have, have persecuted us, have criticized us, have challenged us, have dared us, and they are expecting that they will attend our funeral program, they will see our obituary. Ironically, they are seeing our honor roll on TV and elsewhere. In this book I wrote when we pray on page 11, there, by the grace of God, I distinguish different kinds of enemies. There are physical enemies, the ones who are jealous, envious, and just, you know, have hatred in their heart. We pray for those ones that God should change them. And then there are spiritual enemies, the ones who have gone and signed pacts and contracts and covenants with people elsewhere, that this person should be eliminated. This person should, evil should be for this person. That one you use, Psalm 35, verse 1, that father... Contend against them yourself. God will prepare a table before us. God will honor us in the presence of such people. You know when they have gone to a native doctor and they have said, let this sister die. And then they only for them to be looking for their black dresses to iron. They instead see you coming with a baby in your hand. You did not even just die. God gave you another life. Hmm. It hurts. That is what our shepherd Jesus does. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Now in this our world, we are the ones anointing ourselves. We are no more waiting for God to anoint us. You see somebody who knows one and a half verse, one and a half Bible verse. Already the person is a prophet, bishop, apostle, deacon, all those ones. Ah! If you ask the person a question out of that one and a half verse that the person knows, to answer is a problem. These days, we no longer wait for God to anoint our head with oil. Anointing speaks of favor, speaks of distinction. It speaks of of separation. These days, 
since we are shepherding ourselves, we are also anointing ourselves. These days, anointing has a price. Pastors and authorities no longer anoint people because God has said so. We now anoint people because of what we stand to gain. If I anoint this person from this family, how much would they give? You are even anointing you like this. You are not a chief launcher. You are not a chief fundraiser. How much will you give me in return? Beloved in the Lord, <laughs> it is God who anoints our heads with oil. He will not come down to do it in person. He will use people, no doubt. But let us wait for God to anoint us. Let us not anoint ourselves. My cup overflows. When it is God who does the anointing, there is an abundance of blessing. There is an abundance of the things that come with the anointing. When David was anointed king, he did not sit on the throne immediately. But there was an abundance of, of, of favor, of strength, of wisdom in his life that he was able to minimize Goliath just by the words of his mouth. David won the battle verbally, spiritually, even before fighting it physically. That is what the anointing can do. The anointing can make you the kind of person who, where everybody is seeing negative, you are seeing positives. When everybody is saying, when men are saying they say casting down, you are saying they say lifting up because you know the God who has anointed you. You know the God who is causing your cup to overflow. That's why even when Isaac went to a land of famine, Isaac was still rich. Isaac. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Bible does not say surely goodness or mercy. It is goodness and mercy. It means goodness has its role to play. When the goodness of the Lord is upon somebody, that person is prosperous according to divine standards. When the mercy of the Lord is upon somebody, that mercy will speak for that person. Even when the enemy comes with an attack, even when people rise up against that person, the mercy of God upon that person's life will speak volumes. The Bible did not say surely goodness and mercy shall, shall come seasonally. It says it shall follow me. And it says surely. It means it's a certainty. It's a fact. It's something that must happen. The Bible says the steadfast love of the Lord is new every morning. The mercies of the Lord are renewed every morning. This is the goodness that will follow us. The mercy that will speak for us all the days of our lives. And we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The house of the Lord is the presence of the Lord. Are we visitors? The Bible did not say, and we shall be passersby or passers by in the house of the Lord. It says we shall dwell. We shall spend time. We shall seek the face of the Lord. We shall meditate upon the word of the Lord. We shall be permanent inhabitants in the house of the Lord. How much time do we spend in the presence of the Lord? How much, how much of our time do we devote to things of God? For personal purposes and for, for collective purposes. Some of us are carried away by collective purposes. We forget personal purposes. Some of us are carried away by personal purposes. And our collective purposes are lacking. May God help us to be able to strike a balance. To remember... That when we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever, then all that we have heard here as promises will become yes and amen in our lives and in the lives of everyone connected to us by blood and by name. May God bless his word in Jesus' name. Amen. amen.